With Stannis dead, Davos remains at Castle Black. That night, alerted by ghosts howling, Davos runs into the courtyard and finds Jon's body in a pool of blood, having just been murdered by his own men. Along with Edison Tollett and several men loyal to Jon, Davos has Jon's body taken inside the castle to his quarters, where he and the others immediately realize Thorne was behind the mutiny. Melisandre also observes Jon's body and claims that she had seen a vision of Jon fighting at Winterfell. Knowing of their coming deaths, Davos sends Ed to find Tormund and the wildlings to help them against Thorn and his men, while he and Jon's friends take refuge inside Jon's office and lock the door. Later, Davos is approached by Thorn, who offers him and Melisandre a safe passage to the south with food and a fresh horse. Davos feigns interest and promises Thorn an answer by nightfall, knowing that Thorn will kill them all anyway once they open the door. With Ed still having not returned, Davos muses to the skeptical brothers that Melisandre may be their only hope for survival. At nightfall, when Ed does not return, Davos brandishes Jon's sword, Longclaw, and apologizing to the others for a potentially poor showing of swordsmanship as he's not much of a fighter, prepares to lead the loyalists as the mutineers start breaking their way through the door with a sledgehammer. Ed and Tormund arrive in time to end the struggle and place Thorn and the mutineers under arrest, saving Davos and the others. Davos later accosts Melisandre and speaks to her about her powers, which may or may not include that of resurrecting someone. He witnesses Melisandre clean John's body and perform a ritual meant to revive him, but when John fails to respond, his friends leave the room one by one to collect wood for his pyre. Davos remains behind, eyeing John's body with remorse before leaving as well, mere seconds before John awakens. Hearing John's gasping breaths, Davos returns and assists the Lord Commander as he gets used to his body again. Melisandre soon joins them, pressing John for details about what he saw while dead. When John replies that he saw nothing, Davos ushers Melisandre out before she can declare a new prince that was promised, and advises John that while he did die, he is alive now and thus needs to accept it. Davos later assists the still weary John in greeting the Black Brothers, and observes when he hangs the leaders of the mutiny. Following Sansa Stark's arrival at Castle Black with Brienne of Tarth and Podrick Payne, Davos accosts Melisandre and asks her where she will go next. She claims she will go where Jon commands her, as he is the prince that was promised, not Stannis as they all believe. Davos again asks Melisandre about what happened to Stannis, and then Shireen. Before Melisandre musters up the courage to admit to Davos that she burned Shireen alive, Brienne confronts the pair, and tells Davos that she personally executed Stannis after he admitted his role in Renly's assassination with Melisandre's blood magic, though she promises she will not take any further revenge. Davos later attends a war council with Jon, Sansa, Brienne, Podrick, Ed and Tormund, pointing out their lack of men in comparison to the Boltons, who have the Umbers and Karstarks on their side. Though Sansa claims that the remaining northern houses will rally behind Jon, since both Jon and Ramsay are bastard-born, Davos remains skeptical, reminding Sansa that the Karstarks forswore their allegiance to the Starks because Rob Stark beheaded Rickard Karstark, and the other Northern Houses did not rise up against the Boltons for their role in the Red Wedding, concluding that while Northerners are more loyal than most, they will most likely not fight a losing battle for her or John. Sansa points out that her great-uncle, Brynden Tully, has rebuilt the Tully army and retaken Riverrun from the phrase, surprising Davos, who has heard of Brynden's reputation and admits his help would be invaluable concluding that with help from House Tully and the remaining minor northern houses, they may stand a chance against Ramsay after all. He later leaves Castle Black with Jon, Sansa and Melisandre and the rest of their diminutive army. He accompanies Sansa and Jon to Bear Island, to ask for the help of House Mormont. They meet Lyanna Mormont, who Jon reminds of the letter she sent, that Bear Island serves the king in the north whose name is Stark. She dismisses Jon and Sansa, saying they are not Starks. Davos, however, warns her of the coming threat of White Walker, telling her, the dead are coming. This convinces Lyanna to support Jon and Sansa. Later, Davos breaks up a brawl among wildling fighters at the Stark camp. Davos accompanies Jon, Sansa, and Tormund when they ride to parley with Ramsay, Harold Karstark, and Smallhorn Umber. Jon Snow rejects Ramsay's peace terms and Ramsay in return rejects Jon's demand for a one-on-one -on -one combat. Later, Davos and Tormund meet with Jon Snow at a war meeting and decide to attack early, despite lacking enough manpower. That night, Davos and Tormund talk about their experiences serving under Stannis and Mance with both men acknowledging that they had been serving the wrong king. 
Near dawn, Davos stumbles upon a charred pyre and discovers Shireen's burnt stag figure. He quickly deduces how she died. That morning, the massed Stark and Bolton armies meet for battle outside Winterfell. Ramsay manages to lure Jon and his army into a trap by releasing Jon's half-brother Rickon Stark and then killing him. While the rest of the Stark army clashes with the Bolton forces, Davos and several troops stay in reserve. When Ramsay orders his own archers to shoot at both the Stark forces and their own cavalry, while Davos refrains from doing the same and leads the Stark archers to join Jon Snow and the others into battle. Ramsay then springs his final trap and the Bolton infantry forms a shield wall that pummels the Stark forces. Davos is caught in the trap and barely survives being crushed to death. Fortunately for the Starks, Sansa and Peter Baelish arrive with the Knights of the Vale who smash through the Bolton lines. The Starks seize Winterfell and execute Ramsay. Following the battle, Davos glares at Melisandre, now aware of her role in the death of Shireen, who is watching from the ramparts as the Bolton banners are replaced with the direwolf sigil of House Stark. After the capture of Winterfell, Davos strides into the castle's main hall to confront Melisandre in the presence of Jon Snow. After Melisandre confesses to her role in murdering Shireen, Davos seeks leave to execute her as a murderer. Jon Snow instead chooses to banish her from the north on pain of death. Before she leaves, Davos warns her that he will personally execute her if she returns to the north. Later, Davos joins the other northern lords and Lord Yon Royce in pledging their allegiance to Jon Snow, the new king in the north.